<laughs> on Friday, Washington Governor Jay Inslee announced he's running for president, and for him it is a single-issue campaign. I'm Jay Inslee, and I'm running for president because I'm the only candidate who will make defeating climate change our nation's number one priority. We can do this. Join our movement. This is our moment. Yeah, we can do this. In fact, we can do it from Morocco. Listen to this. OK, it's so important. He's got a really important climate change policy advisor, Chris Davis, who literally commutes from Morocco. I am not making this up. Um, the United Nations flight emissions calculator calculates that's 4,500 pounds of carbon on the journey, on the flight oh. from Morocco to Washington. I mean, what the... What? <laughs> well, you know what, Steve? Conservation for thee, but not for me. That's really what his <laughs> campaign slogan <laughs> should be. But it's like his main issue. and he's, he's literally, It's not some, any old advisor. He's climate well, change advisor. They're important people, Steve. This they're is... not like you oh and I. Gosh. They it's... need to fly. You should just take the train. Never forget, the left needs to create chaos to attain political power. They need to come up with something new. Yes. And the standard of living of the West has accelerated so dramatic over the last 50 or 60 years. Just talking about you know, economic redistributionism, it doesn't work anymore. So they have to create a new, new piece of chaos, and now it's climate change. Yeah. And he has a single issue where he's going to try to hilariously live in hypocrisy all oh, the way to the White House. I mean, we're, we're used to hypocrisy. This is on another level. All right, let's move on. I want to talk about Beto. And Biden. Uh, there's a rumor that there's a sort of potential Biden Beto ticket there. Yeah, they both. The thing that, that was this my week, rumor. I tried to start. You, that okay, on sorry, you're right. Everyone shut me down. <laughs> okay, well, but your I think rumor. You're right. But the thing they're teasing it. So, yeah. so for both of them this week. Oh, we've got an announcement coming soon. Yeah. We're thinking about. It. Uh, by the way, I'm sick of Biden endlessly sort of musing about whether he's going to do it. Do you want to do it or not? Get on with it. Anyway, what do you think? I think Joe Biden needs a good clavicle massage because, frankly, he's he seemed very tired lately, <laughs> and he needs someone to come up behind him. And, and really energize his upper body. Uh, Beto O'Rourke is not ready for prime time. He raised a bunch of money in Texas from people who hate Ted Cruz. Most of them don't live in Texas. Right. And they just wanted to shift the balance of the Senate, and that didn't happen. And he's not running against John Cornyn, who's up for re-election in 2020. I, I do think that they are flirting with the idea of solidifying the ticket now. Two because, white men. Yeah, exactly. In I mean, for an intersectionalized party, party this, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But Biden has the name recognition and Beto has the something that I can't quite put my finger on. Probably Biden just as well. Not okay. They're not running. They're they're running for some kind of think tank position. I don't I don't really think they're gonna be running. Who? Beto and Biden. Really? No. I think Biden. I think Biden, I think Biden knows Biden better. You think, think he's got stomach yeah, fever? I really, by I, the I, way, I, I, just, I really want him to run because we have got such a fantastic swamp watch in the works oh, on Joe Biden. I, 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 I really. I've, I've seen, seen, I've seen the of him giving well, massages. I'll, I'll say this. With, with Joe Biden, if he runs, there will be a time where he snaps and he will look to the left and look to the right on the debate stage and say, this is not the Democrat Party I thought I had. That will happen. Because I still believe they have gone so radically left. Joe Biden is from a different era where you could still call well, Mike Pence right. a decent I person. He got caught which he has to apologize. Already. No, no, I'm sorry. He's actually a horrible already. person. I didn't mean it. Yep. What? And yep. th there will be a time, and that will start the Civil War of the Democrat Party, and we can sit back it's and enjoy It's starting in 2016. That's yeah. correct. Progressives are ready to finish it, That's so right. we'll see what happens. We, actually, reminds me, we, did, we did talk about poor old Bernie. He was out this weekend. You know, and his, I mean, you oh, know, yeah, getting, sound getting oh, tarred and yeah. feathered by Hillary Clinton's staff, calling him King Bernie. I mean, even he, some of his own ex-staffers are... He hired an illegal immigrant to be his deputy communications director. Is that really true? That is correct. Yes. Yes. Okay, oh, I, I, we haven't confirmed that reporting. I think that's what I'm obliged to say at this point. All right, that is all for tonight. Thank you so you much to Charlie and Kieran. Kenny, what fun that was. Mark Levin is up next. Please join us next Sunday when the next revolution will be televised. Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin. This is Life, Liberty, and Levin. Brandon Strzok. Hi. How are you, my friend? I'm great to be here. It's spelled Hello. Strzok, but it's Strzok. Is that correct? You nailed it. So I'm the first one to get it right. You're one of the first. All right, America. It's Strzok. <laughs> and I want you to remember that name because it's a very important guest and a very important interview, which is why I wanted to have you on the program. You, Brandon, have started a movement called the Walkaway Movement. Yes. So let's start at the beginning. What is the walkaway movement? 
Well, we so we started as the Walk Away campaign, and it initially began as a social media campaign. Uh, I'm a former uh, Democrat, a former liberal. I always voted Democrat my entire adult life. And, um, you know, I'm a gay man. And so I, it really, for me, was I, I kind of call myself a Democrat by default because I think that the Democratic Party does this incredible job of marketing themselves toward minority groups in America and telling us that we need them and telling us that we're in danger constantly from people on the right, that Republicans hate us, that conservatives hate us and wish to do us harm. And they've got the liberal media machine backing them up. So for me, it was kind of a no-brainer. I'm a gay man. I'm a liberal. I'm a Democrat. And I think that that's sort of the auto pilot kind of thinking that most minorities in America go into. And uh, I think we'll probably get into the story, but essentially after the 2016 election, I... You voted for Hillary. I did. I voted for Hillary Clinton. So how recently did you convert? Well, so after the 2016... What, what happened that caused you to convert? Like most people, when Donald Trump announced that he was running for president, I thought it was a joke. I was laughing right along with everybody else until it got to be around the primary and it became very clear that he was probably going to be the Republican candidate. And then all of a sudden, things got really scary because again, that liberal media machine that targets you know, people like me and I think other minorities started using our identities against us because this is what they do. What, what, did, what did you think? Donald Trump was going to do to the gay community. Well, I mean, they were telling us that, you know, his running mate Mike Pence was this raging homophobe who was going to try to uh, mandate conversion therapy for gay people. I mean, there were people talking about putting gay people in co concentration camps. I mean, I know it's, it's so laughable now, but at the time it was really, really scary because it, as absurd as it seems to me at this point, I really believed everything that the liberal media told me. I mean, I believed that he called all Mexicans rapists. I believed that he advocated for the sexual assault of all women. And so as he was gaining popularity and we were leading up to election day, I'm sitting here like I think many liberals and Democrats going, what is going on with conservatives in this country? What is like, who are all these covert bigots that we didn't understand that we were living amongst? Because you have to remember too, we had just had eight years of Barack Obama. And so the, the liberal media never told us that he did anything wrong. I mean, they, they talked about a scandal-free presidency. They talked about, you know, the, this amazing savior for eight years. And they never even really reported to us much about people on the right having issues with Obama. I mean, we just thought that this guy could do no wrong. So when all of a sudden we have, according to them, the world's biggest bigot uh, vying for the highest office in the country and he has all of this support, we're going, what is happening? So election day rolls around and, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't terribly concerned because the same liberal media told me that he had a 3% chance of, <laughs> of winning. So there was nothing really to be afraid of. Well, boy, oh boy, did we get a surprise on election day, right? So I was one of those people. How did you feel? Oh, I was shattered. Shattered. I mean, I, was, I remember sitting at home watching the election results roll in. And if you'll recall, it went into the night. It was, you know, they didn't call it early. So I ended up going to bed because I was getting so nervous. I just couldn't take it, but I couldn't sleep. So I, I was rolling over like every 15 minutes and, you know, going to the world's most reliable source, the Huffington Post, to see, uh, you know, what, because I know they wouldn't lie to me. So I was trying to see what they would say. And finally, I think somewhere around 2, 2, 2 15 in the morning, uh, there's Donald Trump's picture with a giant red banner on the Huffington Post that said, Nightmare, President Trump. And then underneath the picture, it said, millions to lose health insurance, civil rights to be rolled back, dot, 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 and other possible headlines from a Trump presidency. So they started scaring us with fake headlines literally immediately after, like, the moment that he got elected. But still it wasn't clear to me. I wasn't seeing, you know, what they were doing. I was just scared to death, scared to death. So I got on Facebook the next day, and I made a video crying, literally crying, saying, you know, like, what, why? What, did, what were you guys thinking? Why did you do this? And um, I spent the next couple of months. Meaning, meaning why did all you deplorables vote for him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, see, it's, it's important maybe to mention that I grew up in a rural community in Nebraska, a little tiny farm town called O'Neill, Nebraska. And so um, 
a lot of my friends on Facebook and family members and people I grew up with, I knew that they had voted for Trump, even though they hadn't actually stated, I knew. And so I was just like, how could you do this? How could you do this to me? How could you do this to people like me? What, you know, what were you thinking? How could you do it to America? What were you thinking? And um, so for about two months, I was posting like this and nobody would answer me. And uh, it was about two months exactly after the election at the end of January of 2017, I wrote a post in which I said, you know, for the life of me, I will never be able to understand how you could watch this man stand before a cheering crowd and mock a reporter's disability and still go into that voting booth and pull the lever for him. What is wrong with you? And, and the media pushed that scene at that rally over over, over again. I remember vividly being at the gym and looking up, because, you know, they don't play Fox News at the gym or at airports. It's always CNN, always CNN everywhere you go. So I remember being at the gym and looking up at the, the CNN on the screen and seeing him frozen in that position with the banner underneath that said, uh, Donald Trump uh, mocks disabled reporter. And um, so I put this post on Facebook, and finally somebody answered me. Uh, it was a woman named Diane, who was my babysitter when I was a baby, and uh, she staunch Christian conservative. She and I had many battles over the year, years on Facebook, uh, but I never unfriended her, as I did so many other conservatives who I'd had arguments with. I didn't unfriend her, and she wrote to me privately, and she said, listen, I don't want you to like, rip me a new one. I'm just asking, have you seen this? And she sent me a video a YouTube video entitled, Debunking That Trump Mocked the Disabled Reporter. Now, I saw this video and I became instantly enraged just reading the title because I thought, oh, here we go, more like right-wing propaganda, more brainwashing. And then I got almost exhilarated. I was like, I can't wait to watch this and tell her how stupid she is for falling for this propaganda. So I played the video and it was about six or seven minutes of footage of Donald Trump doing that exact same voice and that exact same gesture as he did that day when he mocked the reporter's disability. But the common thread in all of these different scenes throughout the years was that he was imitating someone who was caught in a lie or imitating somebody who was groveling because they had done something shady. And I watched it, and, and Mark, I'm telling you, it was, it was the strangest experience I've ever had in my life. I, I almost sort of dissociated for a moment because there was this disconnect between my brain and my heart. Because my brain was telling me, oh my God, I don't think that he mocked that reporter's disability. My heart was saying, but we hate him, but we hate him, but we hate him. And so I couldn't reconcile within myself what had happened. And so I shut my computer. I watched it three times and I couldn't figure it out. So I went to bed, woke up the next day, and I watched it again. And I thought, okay, he didn't. He didn't mock that reporter's disability, but why did CNN tell me that he did? Because CNN has never lied to me before. So why did they start lying today? You know, I couldn't figure it out. So I started asking these questions and going to, you know, I live in New York City now, so I started going to other liberals, friends, coworkers, saying, have you seen this? Have you seen this? And I was instantly met with this wall of hostility and, and, and contempt almost. People were saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? What, so you love Trump now? What are you doing? I said, I don't love Trump. I'm just trying to understand this doesn't make any sense to me. They were very angry at me for even asking questions. Now, I thought this was strange because I thought, here we are. We're upset all the time because he's been elected. We're crying. We're, we're, we're terrified. Here I am coming to you with this little piece of evidence that says, that suggests maybe things aren't as bad as they seem, but you don't want to believe that maybe things aren't as bad. You want to be angry. I thought this is very interesting. But the point is that it became very clear to me that I wasn't safe asking these questions because people didn't want to have this conversation. So I started getting in bed every night after I was working and just watching videos on YouTube or reading stories, trying to understand, you know, researching the media, taking moments out of context. And what I found was fascinating. Um, I found videos of black people showing up for Trump rallies to support him. And when they showed up, CNN would cut them out of the shot so that it appeared that there were only white people there. Um, I, I watched the him calling Mexican, all Mexicans rapists speech and, and saw once again that they had taken that moment out of context, and that wasn't at all what he was saying. He didn't say anything negative about Mexicans in general. He was talking about some people being released from prison and coming over the, the border. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I started to see my and, God. And by the way, let me just, it reminds me of Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. And they continue to push this racism argument. 
that he was saying both sides have an argument. He was endorsing the Klan and the neo-Nazis. That's not what he did. Not at all. He was saying both sides of good people pro or con those monuments. Yes. That there are arguments to be made, and you don't have to be a racist to right. say leave the monuments alone. A lot of people believe you shouldn't be book burning, you shouldn't be pulling down monuments and so forth. But even today, CNN and MSNBC try to create the notion that somehow he's a white supremacist. Yes. Anyway, you were saying. Yeah, no, but that's a perfect example. And, and, and interestingly, with Charlottesville, I had already at that point had my eyes open. That actually happened after these events. So that was one of the first examples that I was experiencing in real time. Because now I saw, I was like, I see what they do. And it's the kind of thing, once you see it, you can never unsee it. Once you realize what they're doing, you see it every single time. So when Charlottesville happened, I already knew. And I was like, aha, they're doing it again. They're doing it again, because you're right. He certainly did not say, oh, the, you know, the neo-Nazis and the KKK, great people. No, no, no. He was saying there were also historians mixed in with these people who were just simply uh, protesting to preserve or history. Or free speech people. Leave everything Absolutely. alone and the warts and all and let the American people sort it out. Right. Don't pull monuments down. Don't burn books. We, we're smart. We can figure these things out. Yes. And the stains are important to know about. Yes. You no, know, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's a Confederate general who did this, 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 this. Right. And that's important to know, isn't it? That's absolutely important to know. When we come back, as I listen to you, mm -hmm. I want to get more into this movement and more of what you're doing, because I think it's crucially important. Thank you. I want to talk about the media. Not just to talk about the media and hit on the media, but what you seem to be saying to me is, I was brainwashed. I was brainwashed, social media, by all these people, by CNN, by MSNBC. They keep pushing this agenda. The media, are they giving us news? Or are they giving us propaganda? I want to ask you that when we return. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, almost every weeknight, you can watch me on Levin TV. Levin TV. Go to blazetv.com slash mark to sign up. blazetv.com slash mark. Or give us a call at 844-LEVIN-TV, 844-LEVIN-TV. We'll be right back.